and welcome back to Just a Recording Podcast, where we have conversations with individuals that think differently and challenge the status quo with success and valuable lessons. This week, I have another fire guest, uh, another female entrepreneur that is stepping into her own personality and just living her life the way that she wants to live with no boundaries. She left it all behind. She was a working actress in LA and decided to just not do that anymore as it was not serving her higher self. She's currently living in Austin, Texas. She's now working with several clients mostly studying and uh, influencing them with astrology and just I, impacting them on a way that's helping them understand through their natal chart, you know, how they can live in their most truest form that is who they really are. And she sees people for who they really are. This episode goes super deep into the universe and spirituality and just living life to be your fullest, truest self. And I can't wait for you to listen to this episode. I appreciate you guys tuning in. Before we get into it, please go on to the uh, Apple iTunes and leave me a five-star rating. Go ahead and click that five-star. It helps the reviews and helps me get searched. I appreciate you, fam. Peace. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Just a Recording Podcast. I am so incredibly honored to bring you this guest today. Um, somebody I crossed paths with uh, back in the LA days, um, long, long time ago. And I've just been sitting on the sidelines watching her grow and <laughs> start her business and evolve and really tap into her higher self. And it's just been such an amazing thing to witness. And I was inspired by one of her um, Instagram live videos. And I literally just DM'd her and said, I would love to have you on the podcast. We have so much to talk about, so many things to unpack. Um, and she did a podcast episode similar to episode one on mine, a conversation with her lady friends, as I did one, a conversation with five guys. And so we really went back and forth and talked about a lot of things that were spoken on on those episodes. And so I really want to unpack a lot of just who she is and what she's doing now, but also just a lot of ideas on the self and this path that we're all on and this mm -hmm. ever, ever endless learning that we are just continuing to dive deeper and deeper into our spiritual selves and so I am so happy mm -hmm. to introduce Natalia I, Ocho, Ochoa, but like mm -hmm. I'm butchering it with my gringo-ness. No, so please give was... me your Spanish because I, I, I love the, the Spanish <laughs> lingo when you say your name. I'm like, oh, it sounds so amazing. <laughs> Natalia Ochoa. <laughs> oh my God, I just melts. I just melt. Um, Natalia Ochoa, Natalia Ochoa. Eh, they both work. Yeah, I love it. Which I, you, we, you mentioned your when I text you, you're like, oh my god, five six one. Um, you're from Miami originally, yes. right? Yes, I literally have this thought all the time. I'm like, you can take the girl out of Miami, but you cannot take the girl. I mean, you take, you cannot take Miami out of the girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. Um, what part of Miami was it? Um, uh, for the people that know, it's Westchester. So. Mm -hmm. People maybe know Coral Gables, and if yeah, you know yeah, Coral yeah. Gables, I'm just east of Coral Gables. Yeah, yeah. So well, like I in was... the real Miami, not what people believe or think that is Miami. Right, not South Beach, which is not, like yeah. um, two miles long. Yeah, I was yeah. in, uh, I think, did I don't know if we talked about this when we met in LA, but I was in Aventura for a while, Fort Lauderdale. So I worked at the Aventura Mall or Aventura Aventura. Aventura, Aventura Mall. Did you work yeah. at Aventura? Yeah, that's literally 
every woman that comes into that mall. Hi. Oh my God. Where did you get that? Can I be? Can you tell me where the bathroom is? Okay. Thank you. Oh, thank you. And I thank love you. it. It like brought me back when I listened to your episode with your girlfriends, like hearing, like, what was it? Like three out of the four of you were from Miami. It was like, yeah. oh my God, I miss this so much. I love the Spanish culture. It's just yeah. so mm -hmm. incredible. So, um, well, thank you so much for joining me tonight on this yes. lovely evening. I want to get to know you a little bit more. So mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit about yeah. um, growing up in Miami and then kind of what brought you to the West Coast. Yeah. Um, honestly, I've always said like, uh, I think that growing up in Miami has was uh, just so beautiful for me. I, I really, really wouldn't have wanted to grow up in any other place. I, I don't, I wouldn't live there right now. And like, I feel like a lot of people that, you know, live there, it's just kind of, uh, Miami is, is a really beautiful place and can be very beautiful for the, uh, like the immersion of uh, Hispanic culture, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, I call it Northern Cuba or, you know, right. like doing business in Miami is totally different. Just like the whole uh, like aspect and atmosphere is really different, but I feel very grateful specifically because of the fact that I'm first generation American. And because my, my parents, they don't speak English. So, uh, mm -hmm, yeah. Wow. So Spanish is my first language. And wow. I was, you know, I was really able to keep and, and perfect and, and own my Spanish and my Spanish speaking um, because of the fact that my parents never learned English. And um, so, yeah, living in my household was really interesting. Like me and my brother would have conversations in English and uh, me and my family would have them in Spanish. But I just I I love the, the culture. I love the heat. I love the people. Um, I think it's just very alive and vivacious. And I think that it allowed me to have like a very broad perspective of the world, uh, not only just because I'm Hispanic and Latina, but also because there was like the like the immersion the melting of pot of so the, many yeah, different the melting cultures pot yeah. of all the cultures and that I got to experience because obviously all my my parents friends were Latino so it was always a party in my house it was always just mm -hmm. alive and then um I also feel like I got my partying out like really early right. like I really got it out of my system I'm sure <laughs> so. right yeah, it, Miami is such a melting pot. It's like you have the Haitian culture, which I mm -hmm. absolutely love. You have Cuban culture. Mm -hmm. You have the European culture that mm -hmm. is in like the South Beach area. I mean, there's so many others that just kind of all converge into one. And I think Miami not only has changed. It's been a couple of years since I've been there, but it's changed just since I've been there in the last and it's changed in the last year or two yeah. just alone. So, um, oh, yeah, the, the yeah. tech boom is Mm -hmm. it's crazy there yeah and I was always involved in art schools and I also think that the art there has really really flourished and I also find that many amazing artists also have come from Miami mm -hmm. so it's like it's it, it really is just like a hub of a lot of creativity and fun and that's like that fun nature that I that I bring to all my work and my vivaciousness <laughs> is like I feel like it's because I grew up there and because like there's just a difference of loudness and just like a, a self-expression that just really was cultivated there like I don't think I would have had it um anywhere else and the reason that I say that maybe New York um yeah. but the reason that I say that is because when I went to Syracuse um I was like it was like a culture shock. I was like, I, I would literally go up to people and be like, hi, how are you? And I would go and give them a kiss on the cheek because like, that's how you say hello in Miami. You yeah. just go up to, and everyone was like, what are you doing? Are you, are you, are you? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know you. They were like personal bubble space. And I'm like, but you don't, oh, okay. And, and people had no idea where Colombia was. And I was like, you know, like the country in South America. And they're like, oh, like Colombia, like. Yeah, it was it was very interesting. I was like, oh, yeah. people have no idea. <laughs> Is that what, being, that's where your parents about. are from? Uh, Colombia? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah I, I like to say I'm Latina, like Colombian with like a, with a mix of Cuban because my stepdad is Cuban. I, I grew up with him. OK. And he's Cuban. But my mom and my birth father are are Colombian. Got it. So and what kind of, I, go I ahead. Look, I, no, no, no. I look like a Jew, according to everybody. <laughs> so I'm like American. 
and a Jewish, I guess. Yeah, and then you, you spit out a little bit of Spanish lingo and people are like, wait a minute, what? Yeah, 100%. Where are you from? Mm -hmm. um, so you said you grew up uh, in the performing arts while you were uh, growing up in Miami. What kind of performing arts were you in? Yeah, I did theater my entire life. So since I was in third grade, I, I always went to magnet schools which basically what it meant was just that the, there was programming of the arts. So I did theater from third to fifth grade. And then I also did theater from six to, uh, to 11, I mean, to 11, six to eighth grade. And then I went to an acting conservatory for high school. Oh, you were like in it. Oh, I was like in it to win it. Like it was like acting all the way. I also was like in a musical theater performance group when I was young uh, I, I like, I grew up on a stage, like my mom, when I was like super little, I was, a, I was a runway model. I was like a child runway model. Um, I like modeled for Sears and like, <laughs> just Whoa, like, humble brag. Yeah. Get it. <laughs> hey. Excuse me. Oh my God. I have to send you the pictures. It's I I'm, so, I'm so little. It's so cute. <laughs> <laughs> That's incredible. So what was your calling to that? Was it just like your mom put you in some classes and you just took to it? Or, I mean, obviously to go to that much and then you said for uh, you went after 11th grade you went right into uh I, I studied acting at Syracuse and then I moved to LA to pursue acting I mean it was just yeah like yeah thing. but then the, the super interesting part was this ego death that I went through and I, I didn't want to jump ahead but that was exactly like what type of like you had to shed that layer and like did you lose yourself of identity by I mean, you literally like to jump ahead, you just left LA, walked mm -hmm. away from your acting career, which mm -hmm. you were working. It wasn't like you weren't working yeah. and moved to Austin to pursue what you're doing now, which is on a completely different path mm -hmm. is like polar opposites of what people that are in acting are yeah. doing, you know, and just kind of tapping into your spiritual self. So did you have a identity of like, just, oh my God, who am I after you walked away from acting? A hundred percent. It was actually a year ago that it was happening. Like in, in a year ago today, I was leaving everything behind in like still being in LA. Um, I, I, at the time was, I was running a nonprofit for Latino actors um, just because it, basically when I moved to Los Angeles, I struggled a lot with being Latina because like all my agents and managers just wanted to pitch me because that that's what was needed. That's right. what the, you know, the industry needed, but then I would go into the room and then they would be like, you're white. And I'm like, I'm not. <laughs> so it got me so upset. Like I, I literally was, I, I literally, I, I remember doing an audition where I, I did a piece in Spanish and then I did the piece in English. And he's just like, I don't understand. Like, are you Latina? And I was like, did you not just hear what I, and I was like, what? I was like, <laughs> and, uh, and it, it honestly, it angered me so much. And, and, but the thing is that I always believe that it's nobody's fault if they don't know anything, you know, if, if education is, if people are uneducated, it's not their fault. It just, they just haven't been taught it. And, and there are a lot of really angry Latinos that like to shove down, you know, things down people's faces. And I was like, I want to do mine with love, education, media. I want to just teach people and, you know, bring up all the Latino artists that if it, it, you know, if there really is a misrepresentation of Latinos in, in the media, which is what informs people of what we look like and sound like and act like, right. then let me just try to do something to change, to change it. Yeah. That's the worst about LA is like, you know, you, you're fitting a mold for a role that they need you to fit in. And it's like, yeah. if you're not that, you're mm -hmm. get out. I, I hated auditioning and I only did it for a very small bit. And it was the, it was literally the worst. Yeah, it, it honestly, it definitely becomes very soul crushing um, because, because of some, because of a, of a, of a concept that I learned when I stepped away from it. And, and when I stepped into this energy work that I do now, which is that everything in life should be an equal energy exchange, right? So the thing is that with acting in general, there's so much outputting, there is so much outputting of energy constantly with auditions, with driving to auditions, with you know, spending time, energy, resources, just kind of going after this, this dream. 
um, that there's nothing wrong with it. I think it's really beautiful to have that deep desire, but there, uh, what a lot of actors don't realize is that then when there isn't enough on the other side, then that's when it becomes depleting. And that's when you just, you just start running on empty and that's why people become jaded. And that's why people want to give up because, you know, in life in any other business in the world, there is an even exchange. There is, you know, you put out something and then you receive something in return. But unfortunately in the arts, that's not always the case. Yeah. Um, and that, yeah, and, and that's why there's like this whole concept of the suffering artist or the broke artist, you know, is because artists just do things from the heart and the soul. But sometimes it's just not, it's just not seen in, in that way. Yeah, I can't even imagine. And I'm a, I'm a privileged white male to be not only female, but also minority and having to deal like to deal with that of like, not only the turndowns or you didn't fit the role, you didn't fit the mm -hmm. part, your hair color is wrong. Like, yeah, because I have green eyes and I have light hair and I don't look like I'm Mexican. So therefore I, I can't, I can't play that role because then, you know, people are going to be confused. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a whole system and I really wanted to undo it. Mm -hmm. uh, I wanted to educate through, you know, through everything, but then I found a deeper, a deeper meaning um, just for life in general. And, and, you know, it's funny because I did, and I, I shed and I left it all behind. And I was just like, I wanted so deeply to erase that, that aspect of my life, even though it's been true for me since I was in third grade, right. I wanted, I wanted to just let it go and just take one big eraser and just erase it all. But it's so funny because ever since I moved to Austin, like now, if you Google me, I come up on Google and I'm like actress. <laughs> And people now that they look me up, they're like, oh, she's an actress, um, which is really funny to me because at the end of the day, um, I believe that, you know, in our, on our path, that nothing was an accident. There was, there wasn't an accident that my mom felt so called to put me into theater. There wasn't an, it, it wasn't an accidental desire that I had since I was 15 to move to LA to become an actress. It's like, it made me who I am. I worked with amazing professionals. I understand entertainment and media. Unfortunately, it's a very toxic environment. Uh, and that's what I discovered through, through working so deeply in it. And now I'm just really inspired to create my own media company. And I want to have my own talk show and my own, you know, TV show where then, you know, where I just really call the shots. So that's kind of like the larger version of what I'm doing now, but it starts with just, you know, the, the training and the, that I'm doing for people. Yeah. So well, it's still in the mix. Yeah. I mean, it would basically, you, you basically just answered your own question is like, it's on the pathway. Like you had to go through those versions of understanding the, mm -hmm. you know, the environment of what LA and that lifestyle brings you because look at what's going to do for you now, as you've stepped into this new truer self where mm -hmm. you're focusing on healing others. And now you're mm -hmm. going to be given the platform to create the content and mm -hmm. call the shots and make the decisions. Cause you know, behind the camera and also in yeah. front of the camera. Yeah, exactly. And I have, you know, deep connections that I made with people in the industry that are, you know, making massive change. And I, I realized that the reason why I wanted to be an actress so much is because I wanted the mic is because I wanted to get to a certain level of fame, um, not from a narcissistic perspective, but from the aspect of just having so much clout and being so well known to then take the mic to then be an inspiration for others. Mm -hmm. So then I backtracked and I was just like, what if I just start with being the inspiration? What if I just start with actually speaking the truth that I want to. And then whether it happens or not, you know, that's, I'm going to build it anyway. So, <laughs> yeah, you know, it's a, so I, I was thinking of it a bit reversed and the beauty of me just making my own brand and my own thing now is that sometimes when you're in the entertainment industry and you're like a very successful actress, a lot of people have control over what you do and you don't do. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't on my journey and it wasn't on my path to be that which is why i feel like i was presented with so many constant roadblocks to get me to the point to always ask myself like why isn't this working you know i think that there has to be a level of flow in your life for you know you for, to go from one step to another and that's when you know that you're in alignment and that you're on the right path if i was constantly being bombarded with like just so much obstacles meaning like I would never get cast because I was never Latina enough or I was never white enough or whatever, 
there was a reason for that. Right. And the reason of that is for this right now. Yeah, right. Exactly. Yeah. I, I love talking about flow state because I think a lot of people take flow state for granted and mm -hmm. flow state can be like when you're washing the dishes, right? Like, like consciously into what you were doing and just simply being mm. in that moment of time, you know, like here, like I'm in, I'm completely engaged in your conversation and your story and everything's about you right now. And I think that I, I love doing this and having these types of conversations because it puts me in flow state and it puts me into mm. a state where I just don't like sometimes when it ends, I'm like, I don't even remember what we talked about, you know, and a yeah. lot of people who contact me and they're like, I have no idea what we said. Can you <laughs> tell me what we talked about? Did I say anything good? Was it decent? It's like, we'll find out when it airs. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so when you, what was the, there was a breaking point, right? Mm -hmm. For you to be like, fuck this. Like, I can't do this anymore. When was that? And what led that up? Because as you were saying, like you keep hitting these roadblocks, the universe mm -hmm. gets louder and louder and louder until you're fine. Like, okay, I'm going to listen to you. Thank you for beating me over the head 80 million times. I'm sorry. Yeah. I didn't listen. Yeah. Yeah. So actually, and, it, and it's funny, like how the universe works and puts people in your lives. It was happening for about two years, little by little. It was like incremental before the big break. And it, it started really with like an astrologer um, that gave me a very, you know, like deep reading about something. And she kind of just started talking about so many things, just like so, so many esoteric things, <laughs> so many things about me being a Pleiadian and me having just a energetic frequencies that were so intense that I could heal ley lines in the ground and maybe I, that I could time travel if I wanted to. And I was like, what the fuck is she talking about? I was like, I'm just, I was just asking about my acting career. I was like, what right. you Can you tell me if I'm going to get the gig? <laughs> Can I, what's going to happen here? <laughs> That's amazing. And she, she was like, she was like, oh my goodness. She was like, you um, are so powerful. Like you, you, you know, you're like, your speech is so powerful. And like, have you ever considered having a talk show? And I'm like, I don't know, maybe, and I, she just said so many things that were just so mind shattering to me that I, I, I literally didn't know some of the things that she was talking about. I didn't even know what ley lines were. I was like, I had to re, re like re-listen to it and, uh, and kind of learn what she was talking about. And, and I was, and I was already in, uh, in like the, the, the openness of always receiving readings for guidance because of my culture and because like. I used to go to tarot readers and things like that. Like, I, like my whole life, like my mom has always taken me to them. So I've always been conditioned to be like, when I understand that, like in my present reality, when there are just so many obstacles or, or just things that aren't flowing, then there must be a higher purpose for that. And, and I don't know how to connect to this higher purpose. So I, I, I use people that can to give me those answers. And eventually I, I met this um, amazing mentor and she would give me readings. And then one day she was like, Hey, she was like, did you know that you can do this as well? And I was like, what are you talking about? She was like, yeah. She's like, you can channel, like you can, you can tap into universal consciousness. You can tap into source and receive all the answers that you ever want or need. And I was like, sign me up. <laughs> So that was all happening simultaneously that I was uh, growing the nonprofit and really getting into like the thick of creating events and kind of just like living out that type of purpose. And then what happened was that as my consciousness was growing, as I was becoming more enlightened, as I was channeling more, as I was getting connected to source much, much more and to my spirit guides and to my higher self and to my ancestors and everything, um, the depth of the work that I was doing wasn't matching what I was creating in my external, which was in the entertainment industry. I started realizing how toxic it was. I started realizing that consciousness and love didn't really exist in that plane. But for me, the dream and the vision was so important to me that I held on so tightly that I didn't, I didn't want to give it up. Like I was just like, no, this is just this section of my life. And 
my career is this section and they don't come together. So the conversations and the people that I was hanging around with on my personal time was all about consciousness. But then I would turn it off and be like, okay, now I'm going to go in the entertainment industry, maybe talk a little bit astrology just to like laugh here and there with people. And I, I, I wouldn't merge the two uh, because like I just in my mind thought that they needed to be separate. Um, and I never saw them colliding. And then eventually, <laughs> eventually it just, it got too much. It got too much where I was no longer aligning the conversations that I was having with the people in the entertainment industry. They just weren't internally fulfilling. I had shifted so much internally that it just, I, I like, I, I wasn't enjoying the work anymore. I wasn't enjoying, I would look at scripts and I would be like, this isn't conscious. I was like, why would I sign up, sign up for a project if I don't believe in what they're talking about? I was like, if this isn't to raise the frequency of the planet, if this isn't to become like to teach people about enlightenment, then I don't want anything to do with it. So it was like a really difficult internal realization because I was in the thick of of, of creating, you know, of being in the nonprofit, nonprofit and like fully running it. And I was having meetings and sometimes I would just be silent. And like the president would be like, you're never silent. Like what's going on? And I'm like, I'm just processing. And, and then COVID hit, you know? And then it was like a deeper, you know, awakening and realizing to like, wait, what do I want my life to look like in 10 years? Do I want to be still auditioning and still working on projects? I mean, I was, I was talking to so many, like I was talking to ABC and CBS and everything for media and press kits and talking to celebrities and blah, blah, blah. And I would speak to celebrities and I was like, you don't really seem happy. Like everything that I thought I wanted, like it doesn't, I'm not, I'm not seeing it when I'm speaking to you. So what, so I'm like, is that what I want? So it's almost like I had to just get connected to like what I, I had to connect deeper to like what what was my my mission on the planet. And I also had mentors that I was working with that were guiding me along to it. And then eventually, like I I was getting so many intuitive signals and so many readings about like me needing to step away and me getting realizations that like acting was never the path for me. And it was really hard. It was really, really hard. I had to basically like just throw away my entire existence um, and my sense of self. And I totally lost it <laughs> this time. I can only it. imagine why you've been doing it since you were a child. Yeah. Oh yeah. Gosh, yeah. I can't, I can't imagine having yeah. to like say, what was the conversation like with your mom? Um, uh, With my mom, she, for whatever reason, thank God, she's always been very understanding. And I, I just kind of just said, she, the really beautiful thing about my mom is that she actually was never supposed to have children. And she prayed to one specific, um, he's not an angel. He's like a, a spirit guide and his name is Alan. I always forget his last name, but he was a channeler and he was a spiritual teacher. So she always prayed to him. And then, and then I, and then like, and then I was born. Like she always says like, oh, he, he brought you here. So she, when I kind of told her about all this, she was just like, oh, well, I mean, I guess that makes sense. <laughs> she was like, you know, if like, if you were meant to do this, then like, that's fine. Yeah. And it took me a while to tell her. And there was like a, there was a, a long time where I went radio silent on her and she was like, what's going on? And I said, I'm just contemplating my existence. I was like, I just, I need to know how I'm going to help the planet. And I said, and she was like, don't put so much pressure on yourself. And I was like, I need, I just like, I'm like, I need, I, 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 I had like, I think two or three months where I just was just, I couldn't do anything because I had to figure out who I was. Isn't the ego death, like the toughest, most surreal, hardest, like just shedding those layers and this construct that you've mm -hmm. built around yourself. And, and I'm, older than you and not to say that I've, I've experienced more or less but like you live in this world where you create this facade and then it's like when one day you're like that doesn't mean anything yeah uh, I mean my 
my entire life just flashed before my eyes. I was like, like that, <laughs> like, <laughs> like this. I was, I was angry for a really long time. Mm. I, I, I was angry for a long time because I got pissed because I was like, why did I ever desire everything that I desired? Right. So like, why was it, why was the drive so deep in me to desire something, right? Which is the ego. Yeah. And only to then it be met with, oh, by the way, you're not supposed to do that. You're supposed to do something else. Mm -hmm. <laughs> that, that, that I'm just like, I don't want to. And like, I had, like, I had a year of like a, ten a temper tantrum with source, with myself, with like, with everything. It was so so hard. Like I, I had to shut away a lot of people in my life. Like I kind of went into like this, just darkness, uh, where I, uh, I, I couldn't even, people would ask me how I was doing and I couldn't even respond. I, I was just like, I'm, I'm fine. <laughs> I was like, I'll talk to you soon. But I will say, I will say this, thankfully that as all of this was happening, as I was like completely dying in my ego death, for the first time ever, I was given an opportunity to, that I was like, there was a, there was this man that was looking for an astrologist for a show and someone pitched me. And for the first time in my entire career, someone was like giving me an interview of like, of, of what it would feel like for someone that was actually like seeking me as opposed to the other way around, which is what I was used to. And then, so I, so it was, it was always just there. If, if that makes sense, like there was, there was that opportunity that came to me that made me realize like, oh, maybe, maybe I'm supposed to be on TV with this stuff. Right. So it's like, it's almost not completely throwing everything that I did away, mm -hmm. but I had those like little nuggets of people being interested in this type of work to not make me feel like I was totally losing my mind. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> It's it's funny how the universe just kind of continues to just lightly knock or give you the nudge or tell you that you're on the right path or mm -hmm. confirm like mm -hmm. you're like, thank you. Mm -hmm. <laughs> thank you for that affirmation. <laughs> yeah. And, and, and it was pretty harsh for me. Like I got to the point where I was not listening to the sign so deeply. I wasn't listening to myself, uh, to, to my internal dialogue, which is like what I was talking about for many months. And it got to the point where I was like, I was pushed off the ledge by the universe. Um, and that's why I was saying it was like this time around last year, also during the eclipse season. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember that like something, you know, kind of like exploded, you know, there was like an argument that exploded with my team and um, about like something really silly. And my reaction was that I had bodily reactions to it. Like I was like throwing up, it was coming out of all directions my body was like actually shutting down. And, uh, and so I, I, because I was holding on so tightly, like I didn't want to let it go. And it was like the hardest thing that I ever, ha ever had to do was like step down as a vice chair and then be like, tell my manager that I'm done. And I, I, it was like, a, it was a whole process. It was like, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Cause your ego is also craving like that safety and security of like what you mm -hmm. know and what you think you should be doing. And it's like, mm -hmm. just, like, don't, don't go away. No, stay. So did you decide immediately that you wanted to go to Austin or how did that come about? Yeah. So, um, so Austin was actually a really interesting one. I was working with, uh, with a mentor, with a spiritual mentor. Um, and, uh, and basically like, I just started getting lots of signs. So actually I'll, I'll, I'll go with this. So Basically, I to find myself, <laughs> I went to spend like three weeks with my best friend and I just totally dove into astrology. And that's um, like I I had always studied astrology on my own, but I went like knee deep into it because I needed to find myself. So I wanted to find all the answers in my astrological chart, which is what I help people do now, um, because it was like such a source of wisdom for me. And when I was there, I was talking to my therapist and she was like, so like, just dropped the little nugget. And she was like, so have you ever thought about maybe moving? Every time that you talk to me when you're not in LA, you always seem happier. And I was just like, <gasps> ego death number two. <laughs> right. Wait a minute, what? Like, 
no, I was like, I'm not ready to leave Los Angeles. This is my home. Like, I'm so always supposed to be here. Like, I was just so attached to it. And she kind of just was like, just a thought, just a thought, just a thought. And, and I was like, so against it. I was like, this will never happen. I'm never leaving LA. And then, and then basically like, I just kept on getting more and more signs of people all around me moving to Austin or different places. And then what would come out of my mouth was like, you're going to have a great time there. You're going to thrive there. You're going to meet people and your life is going to be so much better. Like things just would come out of my mouth that eventually four people in my closest circle moved to Texas and like, a month's period. And I'm like, what's happening here? <laughs> and at that time I had already developed enough of my intuition to be able to test these things and be able to test, you know, what different parts of the country would be best that would serve me. And I kept on coming back to Austin because of the, there's still some artistry here and, and things like that. And just, I don't know, I had never imagined in my million years that I was supposed to move to Texas. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden I was just like, maybe this is it. So I had never been here before. So I decided to come for my birthday. I decided I was going to move here before I had ever visited it. That was like bananas. Yeah. That was like my, it was my true test of intuition. My intuition was telling me so source was telling me like, I was just getting so many signs of abundance for me to be here. And I couldn't even think, I couldn't even fathom it. And, um, yeah. And, and eventually when I came here, I was like, yeah, but it became exciting to me because of the ego death, because of the fact that I could now step into a new city with a new identity. And at the end of the day, like that's, that's what motivated me to do the move so quickly. And to be honest, I also felt so energetically trapped in LA Because the more that you awaken your intuitive and psychic powers, the more sensitive you become to energy. Mm -hmm. And I just felt the very dense energy of LA. And it was, it's very dense. (laughs) It's very dense. It's very dense. And it was, I was waking up every day and I just like, I just wasn't happy. And I was like, now that I can do whatever I want, now that my job no longer ties me to Los Angeles, like, now what? Like, like everything happened, all the possibilities just opened. And I was like, wow, I was like ready to be born again. So, so I, I came here, I visited, I fell in love with it. I was like, this is, this place is a hidden gem. I'm like afraid to say this in public because I don't want everybody else to move here. Yeah. Um, but every, yeah, I mean, Austin is beautiful. And I'm, I, ever since I've been here, I, um, I got off my anxiety medication and, uh, and I'm, I am very happy here. Good for you. Yeah. That's incredible. So what, what got you into astrology and mm-hmm. why, um, I am a huge believer in the planets and astrology and, you know, I, uh, I know that I gave you like the time and when I was born, where I was born and, and all the the things I actually just recently did uh, my body graph. Okay. And it's like, holy shit, this is me. Like, Mm -hmm. so how do you, how do you get into wanting to study that and then get to a place because there's just so much, there's so much to it. I mean, just from an, from an astrological point of view, just in the last like six weeks, all that's happened, you know, (laughs) with, you know, the, uh, the full moon eclipse, Mm -hmm. uh, like there's just so much that happens and it's always happening because the planets are always moving and evolving and changing. And, and obviously, you know, it's like the easiest way to explain when people are like, Oh, fuck the astrology bullshit. That doesn't matter. It's like, okay, do you, did the tides go up and down? If that's that is exact that's exactly what I say. Do the tides <laughs> like, go up and down? And they're like, well, what do you mean? And I'm like, well, if the moon is closer to the earth and the tides increase, what are we made out of? Our bodies are made of 90% water. <laughs> so what do you think happens to us when these planets are evolving and roaming around the earth and the sun? Yeah. So, and then they're like, oh, I didn't think of it like that. <laughs> Like, yeah. 
I know it's, it's the, <laughs> I, I'm so happy that that's the analogy that you use because that is the exact analogy that I use. I'm like, I'm like, let's just look at it on a scientific perspective here because mm-hmm. people love to just be like, oh, but the science is science. It's just like, come on. It's like, just because, just because the planets have something to do with it also doesn't mean that science is not relevant. I'm like, it's both. And I'm like, <laughs> it's, yeah. it's all the things it's science and astrology and, uh, Uh, you know, and Western medicine and Eastern medicine, it's all the things, but to answer your question, I'm just so happy to hear that because it's, you know, I, I honestly don't even remember how I started becoming so interested in it because it was such a long time ago. Like, I don't remember what the inception is. I'm going to try to think about it, but basically what I started doing, I had a very, uh, my family is is very, um, we, we, we clash a lot, like our personality types. Like there's a lot of like family ancestral generational tension with my family. There's like a lot of, uh, uh, heaviness to it. Mm-hmm. And, um, in general, so I have always been of the perception that I eventually would love to get to a state where I'm in a complete place of non-judgment for myself and for others. And, you know, sometimes, especially with family and, you know, and, and stuff like that, if, if it's tumultuous or even in relationships, um, you can get so caught up with like wanting to change someone or not accepting them because you just want them to think like you, or you want them to act like you, or, you know, things like that. I don't know if you relate. Very, yeah. I mean, I, I, the only thing that's coming to mind right now is like, as you're looking at others that are around you, they're a mirror of yourself or what mm-hmm. you fear, or what you don't think that you are. You're like, mm-hmm, they're, mm-hmm. they're a mirror of you. And so that you are like, no, I hate that. I, that's mm-hmm. not, that's not a mirror of me. So yeah, continue. Yeah. So, and, and I agree and they are a mirror, but also they have their own personality they have their own you know situation so for example uh, you know I you know it, it it's it's it allowed me to understand other people at a deeper level than just meeting them right because since since I understand the signs the elements the uh, you know kind of the the background of what it means if I know that my brother is a Scorpio moon <laughs> which he is I have to be very careful in the way that I try to extract information from him. And, and that would be a thing like in the past, like that I would be like, George, like, why don't you just tell, like, just be open. Just I'm, I'm open. Just tell me, you know? And then he was like, no. And I would be like, but why? And, and then, you know, I was like, but, but why can't you just be open? (laughs) So I wasn't accepting that aspect of him. Right. My mom, for example, she is, can very be very sharp with her tongue. And just, uh, you know, so I started being like, so so there's something to this. So when I started looking at people's astrology charts, I started learning different aspects within themselves that made me more compassionate and made me learn how to deal with people in different situations. And then that way also learn and accept myself and love myself because there is an aspect of your astrological blueprint, your natal chart, that that's like, that's what you chose in the planet you know, as if you're thinking about it on a soul level, like your soul chose your family, chose your circumstances, chose the way you look, chose the way who you are, like every, every, like your circles of people, everything your soul chose before you came here, including your astrological blueprint. It's like a screenshot. And I always like to explain that it's like, it's a screenshot and it's a foundation. It's like the foundation of a house, whatever you put on top of the house, it's totally up to you, but there are just some aspects of yourself that you just are. Yeah. And when you dive deep into your chart, when you dive deep into someone else's chart, then you can really understand the depth of who you are. Mm. And I love deep, intimate connections with people. If there is anything that I ever did in all of my networking that I ever did when I was in the entertainment industry, I would find one person and do the vertical uh, you know, the vertical getting to know someone. And so as opposed to like meeting of 50 people, I would just mean what person and just get to know them like beyond what they do. And that's yeah. how I was always able to make like really long lasting relationships 
with, uh, with people in, in the industry. And I would always like look up their astrological charts and, you know, and then, so I was like, oh, like I, I get to know you at a deeper level. And then some people, I tell them things that they didn't even know about themselves that they're like, wow, that's so true. Right. So it's a tool. It's, it's a tool. If, if you're talking about the spiritual journey, right. The spiritual awakening that is all about coming home to self. Yeah. Then astrology is just one tool for self mastery. Yeah. I, I love that. You've said so many gems there. And first thing is, you know, the agreements that you have with all of these individuals that come in contact with your life before you cross over, before you go across through the veil, you're, you know, it's like that ex-girlfriend or boyfriend, you're like, Hey, just so you know, I want to learn this lesson and I want to learn this lesson of abandonment. So you're going to date go. me, you're going to date me and then you're going to leave me. You're like, yo, I got you fam. I got this. Like, you know, and then, and then now after this life, when we cross back over, it's like, yo, you played that part perfectly. Thank you for teaching me that lesson. You know, like the soul constructs that we build up and like, we have to understand that we are all, we agreed to this before coming through. Mm -hmm. And these are the lessons that we are to learn to become our highest, truest self. And whether you decide to learn the lesson or ignore it, it's just going to get bigger and bigger until you finally accept this is the way. Yeah. And in this whole, you know, ego death that I had, um, because they always say about astrology, you always find what you need in the moment that you need it. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and that's why after studying astrology for six years, I could still go in my chart and still learn something new. Um, and I remember when I was so lost, when I was just like, I don't know what to do. I discovered that I have four planets in the 12th house, which is like all about spiritual wisdom, all about the mysticism. I have my North node, uh, which is a planet of like your, uh, like your highest purpose. Mm -hmm. And it's in Capricorn in the 12th house. And it's all about creating a business around, you know, structure and spirituality. And I was like, oh, it's just, it's always been there, but the moment that I had the ego death was the moment that I was awake enough to be able to see it in my chart. Yeah. And I, and I made like this beautiful, like, you know, chart that I have like there, it's like a poster board. So I can just always come back to myself and be like, this is who I am. Like, just accept it, just own it. You know, just that, that also gave me the liberty to accept how sensitive I was. I am like, so sensitive. <laughs> Same. Right on the sleeve there, the big old heart. Oh uh. yeah. Like just like so was sensitive and I can feel everything. I can feel everybody's pain. I could feel everyone's happiness. Like I'm a mm. sponge of energy and it just never made any sense to me. And I'm like, oh, it's just, it's always been there. It's like, that's who I am. And I used to hide it and I used to mask it because I can be so professional and stern and all the things. And Natalia's always got it. And like everyone that always has met me is like, there's nothing there's Natalia never has a problem because she always figures it out. And I'm like in behind closed doors, I'm a crying mess. <laughs> yeah. Same. So, uh, I, I, I love, so I love astrology. So I Yay. started to nerd out years ago. Um, I remember CoStar was the first app that I downloaded. And that was mm -hmm. kind of like where I started the foundation building of like really understanding the houses. And yeah. I still don't understand it to the extent where, you know, your 11th or 12th house and this and the, your North node and your South node. And when it's in this house, this is what it means. Like that is still yeah. like, Beyond. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask you for the help on that. Totally. But, um, <laughs> Don't worry, I'm gonna teach a whole, I'm gonna teach a whole course on it. So it's. Coming. I can't wait. Um, but I guess the the huge aspect that you know, obviously, and then the pattern, and I really started to dive deeper into um, understanding like the houses, and then I had a, I had a one hour session with somebody, and it really when they went through my natal chart and they talked through everything about my life. And it was like, they were going through Akashic records. They were going through and they're like, so, uh, November 12th, um, in 2010, what happened? <laughs> and I'm like, uh, 
oh, this. And they're like, okay. And so like they, they do that to like make sure that they're lined up and that everything's mm-hmm. accurate. And then it was like mic drop after mic drop after mic drop of like shit that happened. And it was like points in my life of like, oh, that's when I moved out to LA. Oh, that's when I was diagnosed with celiac disease or, oh, that's when I got divorced and two friends passed away from cancer. Mm. Like, was it, was it, this was something in your eighth house? Was that what it was? Uh, I I I'm gonna butcher it and probably say I don't remember. It's totally but, fine. But I think what what really took me back was like understanding what the natal chart really is. And I think for mm-hmm. a lot of the people that are listening, it's like if you were to lay on your mother's belly while she's giving birth and literally look up at the second that you are born and look up at like what astrological sign, what planets are uh, directly above you, that's how you figure out what your natal chart is. And that's, I guess, the most layman's way to be able to explain like what your natal chart is, right? Yeah. Yeah. And so I guess describing that and understanding- A snapshot in the sky, a blueprint, whatever you want to call it. It's like the moment that you took your first breath, there were certain planet alignments that were there and they influence who you are and what you're here to do because of the fact that your soul chose that aspect. Like that astrologer that gave me that crazy reading, she was like, I don't know what you had to do to your mother to be a 26 degree Mercury. And I was just (laughs) like, I don't know. (laughs) Yeah. So, and I, and then I started, once Mm -hmm. I found out what my rising sign was Mm -hmm. is when I was really able to understand you know, a lot of like what I see in my chart is, you know, one, I'm very sensitive. I lead with my heart. Like my, Mm -hmm. my heart chakra is like one of my strongest, you know, a lot of sacral and root chakra are also um, super strong in me. And so it, it really started to blow my mind when I started to look deeper into this spirit that I am and, Mm -hmm. and where I fall on, on certain aspects of, what makes me so outgoing, what, where Mm -hmm. I can channel my Leo energy, when Mm -hmm. I can channel that like femininity. And I think talking about the masculine and feminine is also a huge part of the astrological signs because, you know, I attribute a lot of my femininity to being raised by women, but also I think from an astrological standpoint, it, it plays a huge role as well. Like I have a very good balance of my masculine and feminine energy. Like I'm Mm -hmm. probably more feminine than I am masculine, but I can turn the masculine on very, very Mm -hmm. quickly. But I would much rather live in my feminine energy than Mm -hmm. masculine any day. Um, And that Mm -hmm. just makes me feel like my truest self. Mm. So what about sexually? What What do you you connect to? uh, Meaning like... uh, just going off because I, I know that we had talked about David Data's work um, because there, there, there's like layers, right? So if you love to live within your feminine essence, they always like, I think he, he phrases it like, what about in your sexual essence? Like, do you uh, prefer to be with a more feminine sexual partner or with like a, a masculine sexual partner? So it, it flip-flops. So sometimes masculine and sometimes feminine. Mm-hmm. Um, it really depends Mm-hmm. And so I think it's kind of like, I always, I always say, I don't have a type like that. Mm-hmm. I don't, I don't like have a type of girl that I, I mm-hmm. like to date. It's like, it's kind of like the energy and what I'm feeling. And so it, I think it changes and evolves in mm-hmm. where I'm at spiritually and in, in my journey. Um, right there are masculine partners that I've had and there's also very feminine partners. Mm -hmm. I like to play a masculine role, but I also like to play a feminine role in my relationship. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, and I believe that there could be totally a balance. Um, um, I, you know, again, like I, I definitely went from being so masculine and then I've, I've just worked on so much of my femininity because like, I just really needed to soften. And because I, I also enjoy, much more being in my feminine. And that's totally what I'm experiencing. Like with building a business is so much masculine energy and so much like thinking and doing and everything. And then how do I just like, just surrender and flow in, you know, in the other aspect of it. Yeah. I, you know, it's, 
I'm like thinking as, as you are speaking, you know, I think it also depends on like the gender of the partner that you're looking into and that, you know, Mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what gender. And so, you know, I've had certain aspects of, you know, really being gender fluid and, you know, Mm -hmm. being interested in like, or attracted to, you know, a good looking guy or like also being attracted to a good looking girl, you know? And Mm -hmm. so I think, really dabbling in those aspects of the masculine and the feminine energy it doesn't have Mm -hmm. to be male or female no no definitely not there there are so many women that are very masculine and and you know and and so many males that are very feminine and you know it just it, it it's all really what you're there's no right or wrong about this and that's the beauty of it it's like it's whatever your preference is you know but i think he always brings it back to like the set the sexual energy of the person because I believe it just, it just has something to do with like how you like to show up in, um, in sex. So you can have more of that polarity with the person that you like end up with type thing. So, uh, so for example, like if you like to do the ravishing versus being ravished, <laughs> mm-hmm. then that, that would be the, I think what, what he explains. And there are some people that are in the middle right? that they don't, that they don't have a, that they don't have one or the other, but then the polarity really does come from the from one being more in the masculine and one being more in the feminine or the other way around yeah Mm -hmm. yeah i love that so um in terms of what are you serving to people now in Mm -hmm. your business that you're doing so let's talk a little bit about that and then we'll talk a little bit about what the experience is like because i think that is super interesting for those that have never done it before like it Mm -hmm. literally is life-changing case in point you (laughs) like completely change your life because of it yeah um okay yeah so there are just there's so many there's so many beautiful aspects so i i would say like the the what i'm leading with right now is that i am teaching how you know i'm teaching entrepreneurs and artists how to awaken and hone their intuition so basically very similarly to what i went through um i believe that it allows you to have a much more uh, you know, optimal and like life of flow. If you are just always connected to the conversation with the universe. And so I, I really teach people what, uh, it feels like to, to be awakened to that type of energy, to, to receive messages and information and decode it and know what it means. But specifically right now, what I'm working with is like, I love being able to work with entrepreneurs because I believe that as we're, you know, as more and more people are starting their own businesses and as as more and more people are, you know, in startups and just wanting to be so connected to their vision and their mission. I also think it's really important that, that if they have this spiritual pull that they are connected to their spirituality. And especially when making business decisions, I think it's really, really important to be able to really ask yourself, Uh, and how to be guided in every direction for that. So you don't waste time. And so you're always connected to your mission. Mm. And, and then also to create, you know, conscious leadership and making sure that like what their mission is evolved with has to do with some sort of like impact because at the end of the world, you know, at the end of the day, at the end of the world, (laughs) the world, wait a minute, what are we (laughs) talking? What did you see in the stars? (laughs) I just think that that's such a Freudian slip, like, you know, just because, right. because I, I, I believe that, you know, if we start thinking with larger questions of like, what's the legacy that we want to leave behind after we've passed, you know, the world is not really in a good state right now. And I believe that if more people are awakened to the truth of who they are, to the truth of spirituality, to the truth of, um, you know, of, of like, of how they can have deeper connections with themselves and with people, then they will lead better lives and better businesses. Yeah. And, you know, and I think that that's, that's something that really is motivating me right now um, to teach people how to learn how to heal themselves. So there, there are so many things, right? There's like, there's emotional roots to everything that is caused. I've like, I've worked, I think like five years on my emotional, um, like healing for my womb. Like I, I literally had so much, uh, menstrual pain every time that I got my menstrual cycle and I've worked on it 
I know what the root, like the emotional root of it is. And I've like totally been able to heal it because of this work. So it's like, now I provide that to other people. Mm. Right. So, um, there's just so many different aspects of like, I, I like to, I, I love like being able to work with people and teach them the things that they get to heal within themselves in order to live more optimally. But then at the same time, teach them how they can awaken to themselves through the practices and tools that I've, that I've developed for myself. So I, I, I don't, I, my whole goal to work with people is to eventually get to the point where you don't need me anymore. And where you are so self-autonomous, where you trust your intuition so deeply that you can really, really be connected with your highest purpose and with what are the best choices for your life in every moment and in your business and in your love life and with your partners and with your family, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. I'm so happy that you said that because so it's almost like a cross between, between the movie, the matrix, right? Like trying to pull people out of the matrix Yeah, and also enlightening them and let them know like, yes, you can come to me and get these answers and seek and I will help guide you. But you also are so fucking powerful. Mm -hmm. You don't need me. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I just, you just need to remember you forgot you're, yes. you're, you're dumb. Maybe you're not, you're dumb, but like <laughs> you forgot, you forgot. And I trust me, I'm not saying that you or I like that. I'm like, Oh my God, I remember everything. And I'm, it's just, it's heightened and yeah. enlightened high power. No, I forget quite often. And, and I mm-hmm. guess my, my next question would be is because this is the same aspect in my journey with plant medicine is mm-hmm. that, Plant medicine is literally just a way to me to grab a flashlight and to look down and see where the path is. It's not a crutch that I want to go back to and always use because I need it to tap into source. No, I'm powerful enough to do that, but maybe I might need the blueprint or the map that I can read and go, oh, this is where ayahuasca brought me. This is where psilocybin Mm -hmm. brought me. Okay. I know how to get there on my own. Let me tap in when I meditate. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Because, and I've, so it's interesting because I, I understand that ayahuasca, you know, does that, does the definite ego death. And it's something that for whatever reason, I was never called to probably because I was never called to it because I had to have an ego death without it to be Mm -hmm. able to talk about it. Because I, I do believe that when you connect very deeply to source that you are, that you do have an ego death because you understand things from a very higher and different perspective. And you know, and you, and you know, and I use it, you know, I also tap into the acoustic records and things like that. And I tap into people's energy and I'm able to see where their physical blocks are and then be able to, you know, to, to reverse them. Or also like you were saying, like everything is a reflection, everything is a mirror. So I teach people and guide people how to understand and look at reflections and then heal them within yourself. So you learn the lesson quicker. Mm -hmm. So an example, I'll give a beautiful example. This happened yesterday. So my cat, so I, you know, you go through your ups and downs and whatever. And this weekend, I don't know, like I totally spiraled. (laughs) I was like, I'm alone. Nobody loves me. Like, I just like, I was like, I, I just lost it. (laughs) Mm -hmm. And, you know, it's like these human things that just sometimes your thoughts just take over, you know? And even though I've worked on myself for like so long, sometimes they still get you. And the whole aspect was, you know, me, me, because like, I, because I don't know that many people here in Austin that I'm just, I'm really like craving just like intimate connection. And then the next day on Monday, yesterday, my cat disappears for like 10 hours. And she has never, never disappeared ever since I've had her. And it was really scary. And so instead of just freaking out and just being like, oh my God, my life sucks. Like the universe is out to get me. Just instead even of my being, cat doesn't like me. My cat, <laughs> even my cat doesn't like me, just disappeared. <laughs> I really sat with myself and I, I got some help as well. Like I, I called it, you know, people for support. Cause sometimes when you're so emotional, like you can't really see clearly phone friend and I was always. like yeah and I was like call a friend I was like what's the reflection I was like what is the reflection that I, what is the lesson and then the lesson was that you know if you believe you know that you are alone that you then you are alone 
and, and if, right. And, and the reflection was the cat leaving the cat left because I was an energetic match. I was like emitting just all this fear-based frequency from my body. And I wasn't connected to love. I wasn't connected to light. I wasn't connected to the truth that is love, that I am love, that I don't even need love externally, that I, I am love. And that's all that I need. Yeah. Um, I was so disconnected from it that then my, the reflection was that my cat left. And so what I did to reverse it was I was able to connect back to and notice in every single moment where I did have love instead of noticing where I didn't have connection or spiraling and like the little aspects that were causing that I was like, I was like, where do I, let me find all the evidence of where I have support, love, connection, intimacy, everything that I think that I don't have. And once I just got all my like thoughts realigned, she just appeared. Isn't that crazy? (laughs) Just like that. Just like that. So that in essence, I'll, you know, and I use myself as an example because I'm not perfect. And I know, you know, just because I, you know, went through this whole journey, doesn't mean that I don't still go through my human stuff, but that's basically what I, what I teach people yeah. is how to be so in tune with their life, to be so in tune with themselves, to come back to themselves with all of the tools that I, that I use to, that, that then eventually you can be able to, you know, to channel things for yourself and have a conversation about any, whenever I have any question or any doubt or any fear, I always turn to prayer and meditation and I connect to source Mm -hmm. and I always ask for guidance and guidance is always given. And it's from unconditional love every time. Yeah. That's the thing that people need to understand too, is, is like the, like, you know, even, even Mahatma Gandhi, even Buddha, like they all have moments where they doubt themselves or they're having a yeah. tough day. Like, you know, even Ram Dass would talk a little bit about his difficulties and, you know, when he had a stroke and, but mm-hmm. it's, it doesn't get any easier. It just, you, your tool mm-hmm. in your case and your kit just gets sharper yeah. and you're able to navigate through it quicker. Exactly. You're able to find your way and go, I, I see, I see what you're doing here. <laughs> I, I am love. I don't need to be loved by everyone. I don't need to be surrounded by people to know that I am love and you get through it quicker, but yeah. you know, everyone just needs to understand that it just, you still go through shit. It just takes shorter and shorter time to get out of it. Exactly. Exactly. And, you know, maybe in the past before I had all these tools, maybe it would have been like a two week spiraling situation, but Mm -hmm. I was able to call into it shift. And then it, you know, it shifted out and, and then, and I feel so much better today. And I'm like, okay, great. I fell off the wagon. Totally fine. Now I'm back on and I just get reconnected to, you know, having my thoughts and, and understanding what being in alignment is and understanding that like, everything is fine. (laughs) Hmm. So how often do you look at um, people that you're interacting with or people that you're working with? I mean, not that you're working with um, their chart and you're like, "Uh (laughs) (laughs) ah, I get it. (laughs) I get it. Yeah. All the time. Everyone. Yeah. All the time. I think I did it to you. I was like, "Mm -hmm." (laughs) (laughs) yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, because I, I think it's like, I think that it's like, it's a, it's almost like a cheat sheet. <laughs> it's 100% like, is it's a 100% a cheat sheet. And that's why I think it's fun. Like that's why people don't even need to understand even the transits that are happening. I mean, that's, that's totally, if you want to get into that, like, it's like a whole nother thing, but just understanding people's charts. Like I have a, an app called time passages. And every time I meet someone, I'm like, what's your chart? And I just look it up and I'm like, oh, because what I like to do is that like, I like to understand people and like observe people and then be like, oh, interesting. This is how your Pisces moon manifests for you. And like in this aspect of your life, or, or for me, it's a lot about communication. I'm like, oh, I had a, I have an experience with an ex-boyfriend that we totally had like different love languages And we had definitely different ways of like experiencing love. And that's why we clash so much. 
and I, and I love him dearly. And we've talked about this many times, but it, it was like, it was just always hard because I feel like I'm, I am a really great communicator and I try to communicate a lot and be very effective in my communication. And like with him, it just did not work. <laughs> and I was, uh-huh. like, was like hitting my head against the wall and it was all in his astrology chart. His mercury is in Pisces and his, he's like a Gemini rising and I, I'm not going to go into the specifics of it, but basically that just meant that like the way in which he communicated was through music was through song, was through creativity. It wasn't through words, it was through emotion. And I always needed to hear things like through talking. And he would always, he was a DJ and he would always like make like two hour sets for me. And to him, that was his biggest devotion to me. And he would give me that. And to me, that didn't mean anything. Yeah. So it was like a total clash <laughs> of like, of you know, and, and I found it, I found out after we broke up and I was like, oh my God, I was like, this is why we can never communicate. (laughs) Right. And we laugh about it, you know, obviously, but it's just fascinating that I think that you can understand, like maybe who knows, maybe if we would have figured that out while we were in the relationship, maybe things would have been easier for us. Hmm. Who knows? But I guess- Do you talk with your partners about your love languages? And is that something that you like to- really tap into or what are your love languages as well? Yeah, I do. I think I, I do. Um, my love languages are words of words of affirmation mm-hmm. and, um, and quality time. And what do you speak to show love? Same. Yeah. Words of affirmation and quality time. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So mine change. They change. Yeah. So I'm physical touch. Uh-huh. And words of affirmation, but what I speak to show love is acts of service. Mm. Yeah, well, that's your masculine. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I mowed the lawn. <laughs> you know, like, good. <laughs> like, yeah, <laughs> I just change oil on your car. Like I love you. <laughs> oh my god. Well, no, that's the total masculine. I got you. That mm. I mean, that's beautiful. I think that that's. I think that that's great. But yeah, mm. I mean, some. And, and here's the thing is that like, I, again, with communicating that or like, there is nothing that brightens me up more than someone giving me an acknowledgement. Like, it doesn't matter if I'm doing whatever, like someone stops and just like gives me like a, just a, a verbiage of acknowledgement. I'm just like, oh my God, I'm so loved. Like, there's just like, is it just the know. thought of being seen? I think so. Which is the feminine, yeah. the feminine, the feminine just always desires to be deeply seen. And I think, uh, I think, yeah, I think that that's, that's what it is. Mm -hmm. So it's not necessarily that you're doing a good job. It's just that somebody truly sees you. Yeah, exactly. So what if it's a superficial scene? Like, oh my God, you look so pretty today. Or what if it's, uh, you know, your energy is, is so um, magnetic today. Um, Do you, Mm -hmm. can you separate the two or is it the same? Yeah. I don't think that someone calling someone else pretty is superficial. Yeah. I think, I think that if uh, someone calls me really beautiful, then I'm just like, yes, I am really beautiful. Thank you so much. Like, I don't, I don't, um, I don't like change the way that I see myself based off of people. Like, yes, it, it, it makes me feel really good when it happens, but I've gotten to the point where I, I am so rooted in who I am and like in the way that I see myself, which is very beautiful inside and out, which I didn't used to think. I mean, I've done so much work on this of just like truly loving myself that when people call me beautiful or pretty or something like that, then I, I'm just like, wow, like it's a reflection for them. You know, it's just like, we're reflecting how beautiful we both are. And um, so, so if they say that, or if they say that my energy is magnetic, then I just, I appreciate anyone who takes the time to say something to me at all. And I clock it as like, you know, I I'm, I'm being acknowledged right now. And, and that means that I'm emitting beauty right now. So it's yeah. a, cause it's a reflection. Got it. So ayahuasca hasn't called you, huh? No, it hasn't. Uh, I, it, it, that's definitely the truest statement that anyone can ever say about ayahuasca is it'll call to you. If, oh, totally. if it's ever, <laughs> if it's ever in your, your wheelhouse to, to come across your mm-hmm. journey, it for sure will call to you. Oh, a hundred percent. Yeah. It's, it's, it's interesting. I am definitely, um, I definitely am called to, uh, to mushrooms 
I really, I li really, really um, like, like it more on the aspect of micro dosing as well. Like I don't, um, I don't need to go on like crazy heavy trips. <laughs> little, little psilocybin yeah. micro dose capsules. Yeah. I just, because I think that they, you know, they're just, it's, it's another way for you to, to connect. Um, but I think, I think, yeah, I think that if the day ever comes where I, you know, I always, I always feel, get very intuitive hits about things. Like if, if there's a moment where I feel like I need it, um, for sure, I'll do it just up to this point in time. Like I just don't, it just has not called to me. So, yeah, yeah. I, I, I love tapping into plant medicine, but again, mm -hmm. I am, there's so much childhood trauma that mm. I've continuously have needed to work through. And mm -hmm. the first ceremony that I did back in December with ayahuasca mm. was like, gave me just enough to see like the path that I need to walk, but there's a lot more work that needs to be done with that. And a lot of, yeah. a lot of trauma that I need to continue to go through to kind of really heal these mm. abandonment issues that I have, but I am mm. so anxious. I, I was supposed to go at the end of June and I think I'm going to have to cancel the trip and oh, it no. just doesn't, doesn't seem right. And just seems like, uh, I need to postpone it another month. Mm -hmm. Um, but I have a shaman that I go to in Mexico. And so I'm really excited because it's like, it's fucking work, right? Like, it's not yeah. like, you're not like getting high. You're, you're not like, Oh, I'm going to go do drugs. It's like, no, this, this is fucking work. Yeah. Um, yep. and really trying to tap into this other dimension to help you see and mm -hmm. fully heal this wound from, you know, conception to birth yep. to now, yeah. There's a lot to unravel there. So it, um, it all goes back to what you were talking about. Whatever tool calls to you, then that's it. Like for me, I, I access like my deepest unconscious childhood abandonment wound when I was in like a training program where everyone was yelling at the top of their lungs, you know, it's like, you know, and, and, the, and that just kind of like kicked it off. And then it just, it was like a five-year journey. So it's like, I had the more pain, like parts of me are just like, I wish I could just do ayahuasca and just like get it out like that. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but for me, it's been like a, it's been like a, like a, like a five-year progress of just, I spent so many weekends and nights just bawling my eyes out, like just mm. uh, healing and, or, or, or with healers and doing meditations and regressions um, without, without, um, without anything. And it's, I mean, it's, it's all the same. Yeah. <laughs> it's right. It's all the same. As long as it's getting done and it's long as it's being purged out, that's what matters. Yeah. What about breath work? Have you ever worked with breath? Mm -hmm. I have, I have, I, uh, it hasn't been something that's fully, um, that's fully, uh, that has feel like, I feel like a lot of people are so integrated with breath work that I, I don't feel like I have, but it's something that I, um, I will definitely continue to explore yeah. as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I've tapped into a little bit with breath work and it's, it's pretty insane. Um, mm -hmm. just what it does, not only just to your body, but just mm. the state that it puts you in. Mm -hmm. Um, it's scary, but beautiful all at the same, all at yeah. the same time. Um, so let's talk a little bit about, uh, what is a typical reading for you when somebody works with you? Um, Mm -hmm. What do you normally talk to them about? Um, um, meaning when someone comes to me for a reading, like an yeah. intuitive reading. Mm -hmm. Lately, it's been a lot about love. It's been a lot about romantic partnerships and um, that or just, uh, you know, career choices like, you know, here and there. But mostly um, it's been about just kind of like what a higher meaning or perspective is uh, with within their relationship. Um, a, a lot of a lot of single women as well, because I think that that's that's like a, a like a something that really calls to them. Um, but you know, it's like it's really funny because the answer is always like it's back to self, mm. and um, it's just it's just such an interesting. I think that relationships are such an interesting dichotomy that like we have formed in our, in our life of just like the feeling that we need someone else. And, yeah. uh, you know, and that, and like not knowing or allowing to find love within, within ourselves first. 
codependency is a motherfucker it's a it's a motherfucker it's yeah we have to be able to stand alone and true within ourselves before we merge with another yeah you know? So how do you, so on my body graph that I just pulled, I'll talk yeah. a little, I'm going to be selfish and talk a little bit about it. Oh my me. God, do it. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm drinking water, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> out of a wine glass. I love out that. Out of a wine glass. Because I don't <laughs> drink it. I don't really drink anymore. So I'm like, but I love the feeling of, uh, I do sometimes, but. Pretending. I'm pretending. <laughs> um, so my body graph, uh, when I did that, was talking a lot about, um, my energy that I get from community and being around mm -hmm. people. Mm -hmm. And so I have the hardest time being alone. Um, it's like, I hate being alone. Like I remember even thinking back, like in college, I would leave my dorm room wide open so mm -hmm. that I can see people walking in and out of the hallway mm -hmm. just so I didn't feel like trapped in a box. And so it was like reading through that and those aspects makes me look at like, oh, no, you need to be comfortable with being alone. It's like, yeah, I'm comfortable being alone, but I hate it. I absolutely despise being alone. Like I like I go to a concert and I'm, I'm it's like my battery is juiced for six weeks. I'm like yeah. ready to go. Like, you know, I'm fully charged up. You know, it, you get me alone in a room and I'm like, I'm, I'm running on empty. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's, and it's crazy. So do you tap into a lot of the aspects of the self for individuals when they're coming to you? Or is it all just, this is, this is your housing. This is your chart, your rising sign, your moon. Um, you no, know. I tap, I tap into everything. I tap into source to see what they have to say about the situation yeah. uh, or it or universal consciousness, right? Um, so for example, like if you were to come to me with that question, then I would be like, what is the struggle? You know, I would ask like, what is the struggle? What is the lesson here for you to be able to, you know, do that? Um, and I would receive an answer channel and answer. Um, but then I also connect with your energetic body and see like what it is, like what your higher self has to say, or like, what is a, you know, maybe there's a trauma around there, like from childhood, or maybe, you know, there's, there's so many layers of what it is. Um, you know, I, I have a, a really good ability of digging up like very, very deep wounds that are buried very deeply in the, in the subconscious. And I also like to give people regressions. So then you can basically go back and kind of access that and see like what the fear is around being alone. For example, like if, you know, we're, we're talking about this as an example and then kind of just like changing the perspective and, mm -hmm. and like adding like a new layer of what that reality would be like and what the actual wound is around you. Like what would actually, like what's the fear? What's the deepest fear of being alone, right? Right. Because the truth is, is that we're not alone. No, never. Never. Yeah. We're never alone and we're never alone and we uh we were born alone and we die alone so there's you know the the most beautiful thing that we can do is to learn to be alone yeah. and and it's super interesting that you're saying this because that's totally what i was going through this weekend was feeling alone and understanding that actually like there is a sweet spot right what we were talking about in the beginning of like washing the dishes and being present that there is something so beautiful about being able to fully enjoy your own presence in, in real time and not feeling like you need something external to fill you up. Yeah. Because I'm like you, I go out into an event and I thrive and I'm like, blah, 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 you know, <laughs> and then I come back and I'm just like, I'm bored. <laughs> right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, I'm so bored. I'm like, what the hell am I supposed to do with myself? Right. But, <laughs> but, but like, but there has to be a, a balance because eventually if you want to be in relationship, that's what happens with codependency, right? That's like, then you need another person in order to feel whole and complete. Mm. And that's not the case. And that's not a healthy, you know, bound, you balance. Jerry Maguire fucked us up, man. <laughs> you know, that you could that you complete me bullshit is full of shit it's complete it's complete horseshit there is yeah. no you complete me 
There is, I am, I am a whole and complete individual and you're a whole and complete individual. And if we come together, you know, then it just means that we get to create something together. We get to decide what that looks like. And then also like we get to support each other. And a really beautiful mentor of, of mine told me like, you, you ask some, your partner or someone else or a friend or anyone, if when you're going through something, if they are available to hold space for you, mm. because it's not about the other person. It's not the other person needs to do anything to solve your problem. No. Like, I, I think it's so interesting. Like we, we like walk into relationships. I'm like, well, I need you to be like this. I need you to be like that. These are my needs. These are my things. You need to pamper to me. You have to do all these things that I love as opposed to just enjoying someone's company, you know? Yeah. Yeah. As a man, it was really hard for me to, to understand that when a, when a woman that I'm with has a problem, like it doesn't always need to be fixed. Mm -hmm. like just holding space or being there and supporting mm -hmm. and yes if to fix if it's requested or asked but just because they're talking about a problem doesn't mean that I need to give them a solution or an answer to try and fix it because mm -hmm. we're, uh, men we're dumb right like we only have what we're only able to think of one thing no, at a time you're not dumb. We, we, we're just like let me fix it I'll just fix it and make it better for you <laughs> <laughs> no, no, men are not dumb. I, I disagree with that statement. I think men are, are really wonderful. And I think that they're very needed. Yes, I layman's terms were dumb, but it's more so like, <laughs> we just want to fix like, we just want to fix you and help and make it better. Yeah. Problem solution, problem solution, problem solution. And, and, and that's, 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 I think that what is the beauty of learning each other, right? Or learning the, the masculine and the feminine, because, you know, because for example, like you said, you like to be in your feminine flow. If you have a problem that you just want to express to someone, you just want someone to hear you. Like mm. the feminine, like, like I was talking in my podcast, they, we just want to feel seen and heard. That's it. Like, that's why we like flowers. That's why we like compliments. That's why if a man ever tells a woman that she's fat, you know, there's like that whole thing, like, oh, never do that. Or, you know, it's, it's just because in that moment, she doesn't feel seen. She doesn't feel seen for her beauty. Right. So it's just like, um, I, I don't even know what my point was, <laughs> but, but, but yeah, like I, and, and then the same thing with the, with men that women need to understand that like men need space or the masculine, they, they need, they need space because they are very like, they need that. There's, there's a reason why there's the, what is it called? Like the den? Mm. What, what is it like? The, the man cave. The man cave. There's a reason for that. Just leave him alone. Like he, he's not like a woman. That's why you have girlfriends that you can talk all the time to about things. Yeah. I, I, I also, this, this idea of like your partner also being everything is like also super dangerous territory. Like your right. partner being the one that you do everything with and the one that needs to hear all your problems and the one that also is just like your support system and that you would do business with. It's like, I think there's, there's, you got to get clear on the roles of people in your life also. Yeah, yeah. completely agree. Mm -hmm. So what's next for you? What's next for me? Um, well, I am launching this astrology course that okay. I said, I'm, I'm really excited um, because I... It's, it's like I said, I, I, I enjoy, of course, people coming and getting readings for me, uh, you know, and learning from me, but I, I more so enjoy being able to teach you to be self, uh, autonomous and just like dig in, like, just, I want to be like that catalyst, you know, mm -hmm. of like for your intuition, for astrology, for, for all of those things. Um, so I'm teaching that next. And then eventually I'm going to teach, uh, an intuition course as well. And, uh, I don't know. I don't, I just like, I'm just gonna enjoy being alone, finding things that like allow me to, uh, you know, to, to really like sink into my, to my joy. And uh, one of them is like, I, I decided that I'm going to go, uh, um, uh, like I love horses so much. I love horseback riding and I'm going to go, um, like uh, work at a stable because I think that that would make me deeply present and maybe mm. en enjoy the company of a horse and myself and the earth. I love it. Yeah. Awesome. Well, where can everyone find you at? Let's drop uh, so yeah. that we can get in contact with you because I'm sure people are going to be dying to get a reading. 
Oh my God. Yes. Oh my God. I'm so excited. So uh, my website, nataliaochoa.com is where all my information is. And, um, and then my, what my Instagram is at natalia.ochoa underscore. Um, that's where I kind of post like all my classes that I do and everything. And, um, and yeah, and then my, my YouTube channel is Natalia Ochoa. It's the wake up the power of your intuition. That's my, my podcast series where I talk about, you know, I, I speak with artists, entrepreneurs, and healers about how spirituality in their life has like truly shifted and made them who they are. And because everyone's journey is so different. And, uh, and I also have a mentorship program. Like if you want to like super dive deep into like the work into like really getting like one-on-one coaching with me, then I also offer those packages as well. And you can reach out for that. Awesome. I love it. I really appreciate you taking the time to talk with me. I, I think we could probably talk for another three more hours and just nerd out on, on all the things, (laughs) but, um, I, I loved catching back up with you. Um, it's, crazy to think how long ago that we crossed paths and we met from uh, shout, shout out to Haya for introducing us yes absolutely uh, do you remember the first place that, where we went it was like that we it was like a hole in the wall that that bar that we went to that yes. had like the velvet curtains or something yes it was like the the, the rabbit something or like yeah the, like, um... and we saw the the most amazing artist performed there the most am- it was Eric Eric Zane yes he was amazing. God, that is so him. insane. He's so cool. He's amazing. He's amazing. He's uh, awesome. That I night was so like much. mind blowing to yeah. like, I, I had no idea what we were doing. And then all of a sudden he gets up on stage and like starts performing. I'm like, oh shit, we know him. <laughs> yeah. A hundred percent. I know. <laughs> yeah. So it's just been beautiful catching back up with you. I love yeah. seeing you shine. I love seeing you be you. so tapping into your source of just who you're meant to be and what you're supposed to be doing. You have this aura and glow about you that is um, incredible to see. And so ultimately that's really what called to me. It was was Mm. just like, I really wanted to have a deeper connection and a conversation with you. Um, Everything on social media is very surface level. And so when I saw your video, I was just like, I want to reach out. What was the video that you saw? Um, it was one of your IG lives that you did. And I just sat and watched it and I was like, I got, I got to talk to her more. We got to dive deeper into this shit because (laughs) I geek out on it. I just love it. You know, like I, 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 all of my podcast episodes that I've recorded, um, this is the 23rd one is everything's touched on spirituality, source, God, universe, Mm -hmm energy, whatever it is that you want to call it. And so it's just been a wonderful journey for me to not only give what I've learned through this journey that I've been on, um, on the spiritual path, but also listen to what others have learned and tapped into. And so it's just, it's just something that I think is fucking beautiful. And I think that we're just, it's amazing to just be on this rock hurling through the universe, like, and being able to have a conversation talking about things like this, it just jazzes me up and it gets me kind of in flow state. I I love it. I love it. This was, this was also so, uh, so good for me as well to be able to, you know, talk about this on this platform because so much, so much has changed. And I think that ever, you know, I spent a lot of my, um, my podcast interviewing others. So this is like the first one that someone's interviewed me on, um, what I'm doing. And I'm just yeah. like, wow, like I have come a long way. <laughs> <laughs> like, look at all the progress. Doing I've made. Okay. Yeah. It's yeah, really easy it's- to, to look at it and be like, I haven't moved the needle at all. Totally, totally. Because it's, it's, it's confusing and it's new. And like, to, you know, even like today I was having a strategy meeting of like how I'm going to launch something. And it's just like, I'm just like, what am I doing? <laughs> it's like, it's, it can still feel very confusing, but I, like I, I always have to get connected back to the mission and like the mission is uh, to help people awaken and to really just be in service to the world and to like awakening the frequency as like as light workers, right? Like that's what we need to do. Uh, I, like, I like the expression chocolate covered broccoli, right? In whatever way that I can reach people, um, you know, specifically for me, I love working with artists and entrepreneurs because like, I love business and I love love and, you know, I love, uh, 
you know, art and expression. And like, those are the people that can so deeply serve from this work because when you're connected to service and when you're connected to source, then you're connected to yourself. And then and when you're deeply connected to yourself, you can like just be just such a beautiful, like a ripple effect on the planet. And then if we all do that collectively, then, then we can really shift how things are happening. I couldn't agree more. And I think what a beautiful way to end this podcast and this conversation with you than the edit right there. Thank you so much for your time today, <laughs> Natalia. You. It was so beautiful to spend this time with you. I agree. I'm, I'm honored to be here and thank you so much for having me.